we will stand up again, we will march again, we will preach again, we will organize again. We are black, we are white, we are Latino, we are Native American, we are Democrat, we are Republican, we are independent, we are people of faith, we are people not of faith, we are natives and immigrants, we are business leaders and workers and unemployed, we are doctors and the uninsured, we are gay, we are straight, we are students, we are parents, we are retirees. We are North Carolina, and we are here, and we ain't going nowhere. We fight, we fight, we fight. Right before Reverend Barber goes on, I want to say just a few words to my white brothers and sisters. Uh, thankfully, there are many of us here, but I don't think that it is this group that I want to be talking to specifically. I want to talk to my white brothers and sisters who have been fed the lie of heritage for so long now. We got Olinda and Kevin here. Have y'all met any of these folks in Moore County? Not in Moore County. We have folks from Yancey and Mitchell County here, Alamance County. I know that some of us know some of these folks. These are folks who have not only been fed the lie of heritage, but they have been taught to love it, to see it as intrinsic to who they are and their place in this world. I am lucky to not be one of them, but I know many, and I'm sure many folks here know them as well. White folks, many of whom also live under systems of oppression, a system of poverty and classism, but who have been taught that a flag and some monuments validate their lived experience. They have been taught that symbols of the Confederacy represent their history, but we know that's not true. Tim Tyson showed us that that's not true. Tim told us most of these monuments were erected 50 years after the Civil War ended to celebrate a successful campaign of violent white terrorism to crush Reconstruction. Tim reminded me earlier today that it wasn't until the 1950s that the Confederate flag became mainstream after a rise in white supremacy groups following the passage of Brown v. Board of Education and a building civil rights movement. For my North Carolina brothers and sisters, this lie of heritage is even more outrageous. Tim told us it was the slaveholders' war, but they were exempt from fighting. Instead, it was the poor, with no stake in the fight, who fought, died, and often here in North Carolina fled the Confederacy, sometimes to take up arms against it. I don't mean to be repetitive, but this is so important. My white brothers and sisters, most of them poor, have been fed a lie. But that isn't the real tragedy here. The tragedy is that these are the very people who wave the flag and stand for these monuments. These very people are hurting and sometimes even dying because of the policies of our state legislature. It is these poor white Southerners who are so often without health care, who are underpaid and need a raise in the minimum wage, who have children struggling in our under-resourced public school system, who live alongside black folks in rural communities who can't drink their water because of lack of environmental protections. Steve, let me know if I'm right here. I think it's also poor white people who benefited from the Racial Justice Act and from getting rid of the death penalty. It is these poor white folks who need emergency unemployment and the earned income tax credit, but instead they get a monument. And they have been fooled into believing that is enough. The lie of heritage is more than just a lie, it is a tool, a very dangerous tool of division. Those white folks will see the legislature, legislators who have passed this bill as their champions. The very people who are hurting them, their children, their schools, their environments, the very people who have chosen to protect monuments over the people of North Carolina. They have been fooled into believing that Governor McCrory and these other extremists are standing for them for their best interests rather than standing with us. We must remind our white 